In this lecture, we are going to study about the widely popular tool used in the root cause analysis. And sometimes it is so popular that it is synonymously used with the root cause analysis. Yes, I'm talking about the 5Y analysis. It is one of the simplest tool and yet one of the most powerful tools of the root cause analysis. Now let me bring it into the picture. It's just about asking the why question five times to come to the root cause of the problem. We start the problem statement and ask why problem happened in the first place. Let's suppose there is a cause for it, but we consider the cause again with the question why it happened. In the similar way, we keep on asking the questions till we ask the questions around five times. Here, after asking the right questions five times, we come to the root cause of the problem. The question why is one of the most important and powerful WH question word because it opens up our mind to search for the region or answers. Having said that, this tool is quite difficult to manage when it comes to the multiple problems. For example, the problem is Titanic crash. You might have watched the movie or you might have heard about the crash of big ship and there could be different reasons for it. Okay, this might be interesting to you. Let's write the problem statement. Titanic sank because the ship could not bear the load. Why could not the ship bear the load? Because water filled the ship. Water filled the ship because water entered through cracks. And why did the water enter through cracks? Because ship hit the iceberg and it created the crack in the ship. Why did the ship hit the iceberg? Now, at this point, there could be multiple number of explanations. The ship could be too fast, so they could not locate the iceberg soon. The ship was fast, so the impact was high. So because of the high impact, there was a crack in the ship. And also, there could be the regions such as bad design, bad build, etc. So you see here that we can still use the 5Y analysis for multiple number of problems, but it gets more complicated if you use the 5Y analysis, which could have many root causes of the problem or multiple root causes. In that case, it is best to go into another root cause analysis tool, Fishbone or Ishikawa diagram, which reports down the root cause of the problem based on different causes and sub causes. So, this is an example of Fishbone or Ishikawa diagram. It simply breaks down the problem based on different causes and sub causes. There are different types of Fishbone. I'll be dealing with them later. Note that we have to find the countermeasures for the problems too. So, solving the root causes of the problem is also important. The problem should be solved at each question. The right approach of 5Y analysis looks something like this. We define the problem. We ask why the problem occurred in the first place. There is an answer for it and we have a countermeasure for that region. Next, we again ask why for the region and we apply the countermeasure for that. We again ask why. We have an answer. We add up a countermeasure. Again ask why. We have an answer. We add up a countermeasure till we reach the root y and we get the root answer and we apply the countermeasures to the root answer. So if you have a confusion, I want to explain this with the help of another example. Let us see an example of 5Y analysis and this is a practical approach or say real life approach of use of 5Y analysis. The case is about Jefferson Memorial. Jefferson Memorial is one of the most important historical moments in the Washington DC. Over the time, the memorial had a problem of falling cements, which officials fear to hurt the tourists because it posed serious problems due to injury. So, if any tourists visit near the monument, there would be risk of falling the cement from the roof. So, let us define the problem. The problem 
is falling of the cement. Let's ask the question why? Why did the cement fall? Because the cleaning people washed the monument frequently. Now suppose if the 5Y analysis was not done properly, standard operating procedures would be changed or there would be change in the cleaning frequency. But would it solve the problem? Definitely not because there could be other reasons for falling of the cement. So let's ask the why question four more times. Why did the people wash the ceiling frequently? Because pigeons would fly inside the monument and they would create the dot. Why would the pigeons stay and create the dot inside the monument? Because they used to feed on the spiders that were hanging on the ceilings of the monument. So why were there uh, spiders? The spiders came there to feed on the insects. Why were there small insects? Because the small insects were attracted towards the light. It would attract a lot of insects. And those insects had the short lifespan and they would breed around the afternoon inside the monument. So what they did was they changed the lightning time. And as the insect with short lifespan whose breeding time would be around the afternoon were not attracted inside the monument, just changing the lighting of the monument would take care of the falling of the cement. So the action required is changing the lighting schedule. That is one hour later in the afternoon. So you can see here that even a small action such as changing the lighting schedule is affecting the falling of the cement. Having said that, as I discussed before, this was the actual way 5Y analysis was applied at that time. But as I talked earlier, if it were us, we would make the 5Y even more effective. How? As I explained earlier, we would use the countermeasure to each Y. We would define the problem and ask why did the cement fall? There could be frequent washing. We would counter the problem with stopping the falling of the cements with the waterproof paint. Another question, why did the people wash frequently? It was due to pigeons. So another countermeasures would be to apply the netted mace so that no pigeons or no bird would fly inside the monument. So why did the pigeons stay and create a dot? Because they used to feed on spiders. We would apply different insecticides periodically to make sure that no insects and spiders were inside the monument and birds would not uh, stay there to feed on insects. And it was the same for other insects too. So why were there small insects? They were attracted towards light. The countermeasure that was applied at that time was just changing the lighting schedule to one hour later. We would automate the lighting process as per the need of the season because the light may differ in the other seasons. This way, we would make the 5Y analysis differently than what was done in the history. Come on. We are the root cause analysis students and we are good to go with one or several extra miles because this will take care of the problem even better than what was originally applied. Having said that, let's run the usual section. Let's run the quiz. Mission wants to quick fix for the problem of leaking of a tank. The problems and solutions are quite obvious. There aren't multiple regions that mission can find. Which of the following root cause analysis approaches can mission use to identify the root causes of that problem? Your options are 5Y, Fishbone or Ishikawa diagram and a deep problem solving approach. I'll give you some time to think. So you can pause the video now. The correct answer to this problem is 5Y analysis because he needs a quick fix. He can just use the 5Y tool only. Actually, you can use all the approaches if you have a lot of time and resources. But that is not always happening. In the next lecture, I will give you an Excel template and show you how we can use the Excel template for the 5Y analysis. Thank you so much for staying with me so far.